Hi guys, today I'm gonna just show you how to um, use the VESC tool app on Android. Um, should be similar on, um, I, I'm not sure if it's available for iOS, but if you don't have an Android phone, you can grab like a prepaid, like $40 uh, Android phone at your local 7-Eleven. Um, get the VESC tool. You can um, get the free APK file. You can download on vesc-project.com or you can also donate $1.99 on Play Store. I just donated because I love this tool and, you know, I should always give back. So um, get this. Make sure connect scan and connect to um, your skateboard. So this is a um, uh, hub is just my hub, uh, two, two hub motors. And um, even if you're using BLDC, I would first run FOC. But the very first thing you should do is actually go to firmware and just go ahead and hit upload all. It should list the firmware you're using. I'm using a Flipski 4.20 plus. Um, so it's showing uh, these firmwares, that's correct. So upload all. After uploading, reconnect to your um, um, your VESC. Um, in order to use, to use this, obviously you will need a Bluetooth module. You can get a, a Flipski Bluetooth module for 10 bucks and attach it um, to the connector. That's uh, I'll show you how to do that another time, but today I'm just gonna show you how to do FOC. So go to FOC, it's just, the menu just looks a little different than the um, the PC version, all right? But it's the same thing, do that. And go ahead and choose medium outrunner, all right? That's gonna be for pretty much all the skateboards. Say yes. Um, I'm using a 12 S2P. If you're using 10 S2P, it's gonna be 10. I'm a 12 S and you can, battery capacity, uh, it's, it is actually uh, 6,000 amp, uh, 6 amps, 6,000 milliamp hour. Um, it doesn't have to be super exact for, for the capacity. And then for hub motors, um, you don't have a pulley. So you're gonna just choose direct drive, which is the same thing as a hub. And then go ahead and set your wheel diameter. I'm using 90 millimeter wheels. And you don't have to worry about the mo motor poles. Don't touch it um, if you're using belt. You can just use 14. If you're using hub, um, just leave it there and then start your detection. And hit OK. And I use the app. I do everything on the app. I don't use the desktop because this is so much faster and I can pretty much program my skateboard anywhere. You can see it's, it's, it's doing its thing. And it's gonna actually do a test um, the good thing with FOC Wizard isn't um, isn't just that you use FOC. It also finds out um, the maximum current you can send to your motors. And this one, last time I did, I got about 30 amps each. So you can usually run a little bit higher than what this gives you, the Wizard gives you. Uh, most, of, most of the time, the motors are rated slightly higher than what the Vest tool gives you. But this is what the test gives you. So 32.66 and 32.27. Now, I don't have sensors connected. I do have Hall sensors on these motors, but the Hall sensors um, broke on the VESC itself, uh, one of them. So I didn't use sensors. So it should say sensorless if you didn't use Hall sensors. If you do have Hall sensors connected, make sure the sensors say Hall sensors. If it doesn't say your connection is wrong or something is funky, and if you know if you connected everything right, what you can do is try flashing the firmware over. Sometimes that fixes a lot of things um, that's wrong. So forward, so that's the right way. And then forward, that's the right way. It's going the wrong way. You can go ahead and invert those. This is why um, you don't need to worry about um, the motor, the three wires that you connect to the VESC. It can be any order um, because you can always change it here. So don't worry about that. So finish. Um, so now it should set uh, automatically, if you go to general, if you go to current, it will set it to 30.66, which is what um, it found through the FOC wizard. All right, um, that's why you should re run the FOC wizard because it's gonna find out the current max for you. And like I said, you can set this higher. Um, you can usually leave the you can you for hub you might want to actually make this like half of motor current max 
just do about half. So 15.66. Absolute max, uh, maximum current, you can leave that. Not too important. Battery current max, this is hugely important. All right, if you get this wrong, uh, and if you're using a BMS, no BMS backpass, this could potentially um, throw you off. Not on hubs if you're using belts. Um, but I know my battery is 70 amps. Um, and then for for max gen, you could set it to maybe half of that. Right? You don't need um, you, you don't need such high braking uh, or regen, all right. And also having that value too high can damage um, possibly damage your battery. So set that a little bit lower. Um, so battery current very important. And then go ahead and double check the voltage. If you're using 12s, um, basically you'll do um, basically I think 3.2 times. Um, 12, I think it is give you th something like 36. So you have to figure out if this is correct. Sometimes VESC after running FOC wizard, um, or if you forgot to put in the correct numbers, it might have the wrong voltage. Um, so you have to find out the absolute, uh, cutoff for your battery pack. So for 12 S is 36 volts. Um, it's going to start cutting off at 40.8. That's perfectly fine. For 10S, it's going to show a little lower. Sometimes it will default to like 10 volts and 12 volts. Then you have to go manually set that. I'll show you in another video how to set this exactly, but make just double check that. Um, also, very important thing, ERPM. Um, depending on your VESC, like the VESC 4.20 Plus I'm using here, the flip ski one, uh, is rated for 65,000 ERPM. That's the maximum. If you go any higher, you can potentially... Uh, burn your VESC. Um, so I'm going to just set it at 60,000, right, which is the max. Um, so this is very important. This is also going to limit how fast you can go. All right, But if you set this higher, it's fine too. What it will happen is when you accelerate, you'll hear, hear this uh, whiny noise. After you hit maximum throttle, um, it'll go... Arr, arr, arr. That means your ERPM is too high. So then you can lower this um, to set it right. But for my motors, these motors I've tested, they can actually go up to 60,000. So I'm going to just set it to 60,000 uh, right at uh, near the maximum. Um, wattage, it will default to like 1 million watts. Um, you don't really have to worry about this so much because the most important already th um, it's set at current and voltage. But if you want to set additional limits, you could set it here. But like I said, it's just like double setting. So just make sure you have current and voltage right and um, you should be good. Temperature, if you have uh, problems um, with your MOSFET or something, you can adjust that here. But I usually just leave it as it is. It's not hugely important. Advanced, make sure your input voltage minimum and maximum is set to 8 and 57 for pretty much all the all the different batteries. Right, and if you set this low, your board will not go. So don't change it. And don't mess around. Um, that's pretty much it. Right. Make sure you hit always right. Um, next, let's go ahead and set up uh, the the motor controller. Sorry, sorry. Um, the remotes. I'm gonna go hit, hit next. Now I'm choose PPM next, and go ahead and grab your uh, remote. You should have the receiver connected, obviously. And this is really easy to do. Turn it on, see if it works. And you can see it's working. Go down, up, all right, and hit apply and right. Now, if you go up, it should it should be nearer 1. 0 0.99, 0 0.98, that's fine. If you go down, it should be negative 0 0.99, point, um, negative 1. Anywhere near within 0 0.03, it should be fine. If you let go, it should be point, it should be 0 or 0, uh, like that. So when that's done, hit next. Your uh, controller is completely configured. And I like to do current. If you, um, This way I can go backwards too. I do recommend that. Um, positive ramping time. I like to set this, you know, if you want to go really fast, accelerate fast, set it at point 0.1. Um, the slower you want to go, if you want to like slowly accelerate, um, if you're like a beginner, then set it to point 0.5 or higher. You can mess with this. But usually I like to set it to like 0.1 because I like going fast and these hub motors, um, they're not too fast. Negative ramping time, I usually leave it 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, I don't like, you know, if you set it too too quickly, it's, it's going to abruptly break. I don't mess with these too much. Um, traction control is great, but when you turn this on, it can um, 
um, lower your your starting acceleration. Um, on a rainy rainy day, it works really well. Or if you go off road, so turn that on. If you're gonna go uh, on a um, rainy road, rainy days, always turn it on. It totally works. Uh, right configuration. Now traction control sometimes can interfere uh, when you're braking downhills and uphills. So that's why I usually turn it off. But you, like I said, for like rainy situations, um, it's it totally works, and you can make your board like run really good in the rain. Go ahead and finish. And that now your your motor controller should work. And for hub motors, you see it's sort of it's a little it's not that smooth when I start out. So what you can do is um go into uh general and if you're not using sensors, you may want to go with BLDC. So instead of FOC, I'm going to go ahead and switch to BLDC. All right, and now I'm in BLDC mode. It's going to make more sound. Now, if you see how one of the one of the Wheels are not going. Um, so if there's a huge difference in your motors, then you might want to go back to app CFG and go to PPM again. This is where your remote control settings are. And go ahead and turn on traction control and hit right. And this will make sure both wheels turn. All right, if 